Okay, this here is the Ecomatic soft cell, and this is the control panel for it. And right now, both lights are red, which means that the cell is dirty or the salt level may be low. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the cell, see if I can clear that, and uh, I'll talk more about the soft cell when we turn everything off. Okay, make sure you have your safety gear handy uh, when you're dealing with acid; it's toxic. And um, the Ecomatic salt cells, they have a high failure rate. I don't really like them too much. Um, if you get three years out of it, you're doing good. But they tend to fail pretty quickly. Um, I'll show you the main failure area and what happens to the cell. So let me go ahead and open it here. It says open this way, close this way. So you just twist it and it should open up. Okay, I'm taking it out here. So this is the main area that fails. It's the silicone. And actually this one is already starting to fail. But this area right here just keeps, seems to corrode away and this little silicone sleeve exposes the metal which causes it to start to fail pretty rapidly and not get the right readings. And um, as you can tell the salt cell is clean, it's not dirty at all, but it's got this failure going on here with this buildup that eats away at the cell. And they have a one year warranty on these. The problem with the warranty is they won't need to raise their salt level to 6500 parts per million to make sure the cell has actually failed which is extremely salty. And they used to offer a th three year prorated warranty, but the original company that made these cells are not a business. I'm gonna go ahead and soak it in the acid and show you how we do the cleaning. Okay, you wanna fill the bucket with water and you wanna put the cell in there so that it's covered all the way. And then you soak and you pour the acid in. I gotta add a little bit more water because it's not covering the whole cell. And that's the correct amount of water. There's all kinds of ratios that the manufacturers give you as far as acid to water. I like to just um, pour it in slowly until it starts to bubble and that's when I know I have enough acid in there. I always err on the side of less acid versus more and once this thing starts to bubble I know I have the right mixture of acid. You can see the gentle bubbling that the effect has when it has this amount, right amount of acid to release the calcium and you don't want it to go too much bubbling uh, I would say this mixture right here is probably one-sixth to one-seventh acid to water. And it's doing what it's supposed to do and it's cleaning the cell very gradually without overdoing it to damage the plates. So again, acid mixture is very important. What I do is I just pour it slowly, gradually until I get that bubbling effect. Then I know I reached the right amount. If it's bubbling extremely, you have too much acid. Quickly add some more water to lower that bubbling effect down before you damage the cell. Okay, there's also a winter mode switch, and um, you can turn it on or off. And in the winter time, from, from California, from November through April, I leave it on winter mode, and it produces at 85%, a lot less, and that seems to do extend the life of the cell. And also, if your cell is failing, you might just want to leave it on winter mode until it just completely dies. That'll help it keep producing. Now, uh, the problem with the Ecomatic, it just needs everything to be working perfectly to be producing salt. So if the salt level drops or if the cell is damaged or a little bit of calcium buildup, it just will not be producing. So they have a high fail rate as far as producing chlorine also. And these fuses tend to blow out also. And they're really easy to replace. They come right out and you can actually see the fuse. And you just replace them, you go to Radio Shack, pick them up and put them back in. And they'll tend to die also. I've had quite a few of them that with the fuses blow. Okay, and after I pull that out of there, I'm going to give it a quick rinse and then reinsert it to see if that clears up the uh, problem with the cell. Okay, since that's all rinsed off, I'll go ahead and reinsert it. And you just simply close it this way. There's this little O-ring in here. Um, it's really thin. Sometimes it gets pinched, so you want to make sure this little black O-ring is set in there good. That's really easy to reinsert if it gets pinched in there. Let me turn it on and see what kind of reading we get. There's also a knob that controls the chlorine output, minimum and maximum. I always leave it on the maximum setting. Uh, especially in the summertime, that way it produces. You can adjust it down if there's too much chlorine in the pool. I like to leave it maxed out. And it takes a few minutes for this thing to actually reset, and um, we'll see what kind of reading we get here. Okay, so the readout, the numbers are actually gradually going up. We'll see where it stops. It should reach 85%, which is winter mode. In the summertime, it should reach 100. If it drops below 90, or 85, it won't be producing salt. So it's gotta be up there at 85 or above, otherwise this unit will not produce. So in the summer, if it's on 
Um, if you have a 100% mode, it's not going to produce it to drop below 85. 85 is the minimum level. So there we go. I cleaned that cell and it's producing at 85 right now, which is winter mode. So now it's producing chlorine. Now it's fluctuating slightly, but it's probably going to stay at 85.